so today we're going to build a marketing analyzer template that scans for patterns with one simple goal which is to save you time now if you don't trade patterns you're well you're missing out on the consistency they offer but we will be showing you how you can follow along and build this with your own marketing analyzer and your own strategies too so whether or not you use patterns or you don't follow along and you'll see how it works okay let's get to building this thing out and we're going to turn this into this right after this Okay, first things first, when you get your Axe ABCD pattern suite, this marketing analyzer template is already included with the product. So when you go to install it, you will have the opportunity to install this marketing analyzer. It will be automatically set up with your workspace and you're ready to go. You don't have to build this out. Now, if you do want to build your own template, this video is going to come in handy to show you how we built this one, and then you can customize it to build your own. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to tackle this marketing analyzer in three different sections. The first is going to be adding in your instruments and, and easy ways to do that and how you can organize it. The second thing is going to be customizing the columns, which run across the top. And the third is going to be applying all the colors and filters and conditions to your marketing analyzer template, which is essentially what's going to save you all the time. So let's add some symbols. Uh, that's pretty easy to do. We can right click and we can go to add instruments and we can select either a pre configured instrument lists or we can select individual symbols. If you haven't seen our video on adding uh, in instruments or building your own list, uh, be sure to watch that. And uh, we'll just do this. So basically, we can add all the uh, futures ones that we want. We can add in all the FX ones that we want. And uh, let's just say we want to add in uh, some cryptocurrencies and we're going to add in a few uh, a few stocks. I'm not going to do them all. Um, actually, what we'll do is we'll do some individual ones and we'll show you how to do that in a sec. I just noticed that uh, my cryptocurrency uh, Coinbase connection isn't started. So we'll start that up and we'll get that quotes in there. So you can see the current price. We have our bid in our, our ask price. Uh, or in this case, I guess our bid in our last price. What we're going to do is we are going to make this, um, like I said, more useful and we'll organize this. We're going to be doing that by, first of all, creating label rows. So that's probably going to be one of the first things that you'll notice with my template is that we've had these label roles, uh, rows and we are going to call this one futures. And we are going to call the next one uh, Forex. And the last one, uh, crypto stocks as well. Now these are a different color. You can change the color of your label rows by right clicking on your marketing analyzer, going down to properties and you can change it where it says label row background. You can just hit that drop down, select whatever color you want. Okay, so now that we have that going, um, what we can do is we can just click and drag these to move them around. So maybe I want futures on top and I want Forex down here. And then I want crypto below that. And then I want stocks below that. So I'm just going to organize this for you. Okay, that should be it. And then I'm going to right click here. I'm going to add a blank row. So they have a stock in there too, so you can see that. Okay, so we're all good with adding in our instruments. Now, when you go ahead and save your template, you do have a choice can say to save instruments so then when you load up your marketing analyzer template uh, you have that all done for you and uh, all your instruments are going to load up at the same time so you can just call that whatever you want saving is obviously key you're going to be making a lot of changes and you might want to revert some changes uh, you might want to spend a lot of time building this out and you don't want to lose those changes so just make sure you save often so that completes step one of adding and organizing our instruments uh, we're going to move on now to adding the columns and customizing them. So if we right click on our chart, we can go down to columns and I'm going to look for a column. This is one that, uh, okay, so you'll see you have a list of them here. Um, we have one called XT patterns that you'll get when you install our software. The reason why we have it like this is because it's been uh, programmed uh, to be uh, very 
powerful and streamlined, I guess would be a good way of saying it. So it doesn't take up a lot of resources. Uh, so the conventional way of adding an indicator to a chart is you go up to where it says indicator as a column, and then you can pick whatever indicator you want in the list. And then that indicator would show up as a column. So uh, doing it this way, there's a lot more overhead and there's a lot more uh, performance uh, requirements, I guess you could say, um, that would uh, maybe slow down your machine depending on what you're doing. By building it out and streamlining it, we've removed a lot of the heavy overhead and therefore you can do a lot more with, with ours. So um, right now I have some presets uh, that are different than the default, um, which automatically replaces the label to a five minute RVR. We'll get into switching that in a sec. Um, but yeah, basically you would add in a column of whatever indicator you want for every time frame you want. So for example, five minute 15. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose what's actually plotted there and we're going to put the pattern value. So this is going to be, you know, what pattern came out, um, at that specific time. And I'm going to change this label row instead of saying an RVR, just so it says the time frame, which is five minute. And you see that the type is on a five minute as well. So all we've done, and I don't want you to feel lost if you're uh, new to mark analyzers, is we've added a column, which is a five minute using our indicator um, that is going to point out the patterns of value. So if I press uh, press apply here, you can see that we have a whole bunch of dashes. So nothing's coming out. And then down below, we have uh, basically some bearish uh, signs that you can see under here and we'll get into configuring this a little bit more uh, later on basically what i want to do is set up all my columns so i have all my time frames that i need uh, it's easy to set up one column and once you have that down the exact way you want it just go to your presets and hit save and then that way if you double click on your column again the exact same one you're just going to duplicate it so then we can change this uh, later on uh, where this one is going to be because we don't need a whole bunch of five minutes we can say uh, this one is going to be uh, 15 whoops sorry wrong field uh, where is it five minutes so this is going to be a 15 minute and we want to change the label as well so we're not just changing the value but the, the column heading and then this is going to be 30 minute and we'll change this to read 30 minute and this one is going to be 60 minutes. So that will be 60 minutes. And the next one's going to be a four hour. And you can do this with tick charts. You can do it with uh, any sort of style of chart as well. Um, so there we go. So if I hit apply, you'll see that we're going to have a whole bunch of duplicated columns, uh, basically allowing you to I have every time frame kind of scanned for. Now you'll notice that this is going to take a second to load. If you want to do it uh, in a quicker sense, uh, remove all of your instruments and do that part last, adding them in, configure your columns first. But I wanted to show you like how it kind of loads up so that you can see it. And then that way you can go back and either remove your instruments, add them in later. So it doesn't take as much time to load everything up. Um, every single change you make, because you might be making some changes, hitting apply, and then seeing how it works. Now you'll see that um, one of them here changed to the five minute in a two. What that means is I forgot to change uh, the label. So it's basically had a duplicate and it just adds a two at the end of it. So we'll change that back to 30 M and hit apply. And then that way that will uh, be correct. There we go. Now it has to load everything up again. So this is what I'm saying. Like if you have your instruments, you add them in last, then it's an easy way to do it. So once you've done that, um, essentially your last thing after you configured your columns, you configured your instruments is making this thing more useful, making it do something. Um, I'm also going to actually take this opportunity to remove uh, my bid price and last price because I don't want that on there. And there we go. That's going to make it easier. So it's going to just be the instrument, the current price, uh, as well as the patterns. Now I might not even want the current price. Um, 
we'll leave that out. So it will just be the instrument and what patterns are going to be on it. And uh, we'll erase those three columns. Okay, so I've decided I wanted to remove my, my current and uh, current price ask and last price or bid price it was and um, just have my columns here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to work on my third layer, which are configuring my cell conditions as well as uh, any filters I want to apply. So filters will make um, certain instruments disappear and then only appear when certain conditions happen. Uh, the cell conditions are going to keep everything there, but they're going to change what you see depending on what the market is. Okay. So for example, if I don't have a pattern, it's going to switch it to a dash. If I do have a pattern, it's going to write the pattern name there. So if I go into my five minute here and I look at my conditions, it basically says that if the cell is greater or equals to than the number 30, write in uh, bullish ETP4. And this is just our pattern name. If it's less than that, then you're going to have basically uh, a different pattern that's going to appear with a different name. And then you can configure the background color and the foreground color. So this doesn't work very well because of obviously it's harder to see. Uh, so you'll want to pick something that maybe uh, is easier to read and uh, you can customize it to however you need. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this template because I'm not going to sit here during the video and uh, force you guys to painfully watch me create each cell condition. But if we go into our mark analyzer here, and this is the one that we've already configured, uh, we go into columns and you can see at the very bottom, we go into our customizations for our cells and we're going to have a laundry list of different cell conditions. So there's about 27 of them, uh, depending on if certain patterns are matched. Uh, you know, we want a certain background color, a certain foreground color, and the text. And if there is no pattern, which means that we have a number that equals zero, then uh, essentially it's going to be a white background with a dash um, that basically says uh, uh, that we can um, assume that there is no pattern. Now you can add in additional columns that you want. I have one called days until rollover. It shows me for my futures contracts, how many days before that contract expires. If it drops below five, it will turn uh, a field to a red background uh, to get my attention. It, it's really easy to save a ton of time because this is the first thing that you'll look at and you'll instantly have a, a view of the market of what you need to be doing. And of course, if you get too many patterns that come out, you can even filter these columns down further so that you can say, okay, just the most recent ones show me. And then you'll have less patterns than the ones that require your, your higher degree of attention. Now, once you have this all set up, uh, there is a fourth layer that we can start talking about, but we'll probably save it for another video on alerting, right? So you can right click and you can go into alerts and you can set up all your alerts here so that when a pattern pops up, you get a visual, a pop-up, an email, all that stuff. Now, this is all saved in your workspace and not your market analyzer template. So that's why we're going to save it for a different video. But again, if you do uh, end up getting our XABCD pattern software, the workspace, the market analyzer, all this is set up for you so that you can see it run uh, the minute that you load up your NT8. All you have to do is load up our workspace and then your market analyzer pops up, your chart pops up, everything's linked together. We have uh, all these in instrument links tied together. So when you click on this, it changes your chart. It's set up exactly the way you need it to be. And that way, if you ever need to go back and reinstall our templates, they set it back to the way it was, you can, and it's pretty instantaneous. So hopefully you find that helpful learning how to build a marketing analyzer template, the layers that you have to take, start off with your instruments, configure all your columns, and then go back and configure your, your cell conditions. Hopefully this kind of sparks uh, some ideas for you as well. Uh, if you need a, a news indicator, you can see this red line going down here. This is when we had a high priority, high priority news event come out. Uh, by all means, you can grab our, we have a free copy of our XABC news indicator on our website, uh, xabctrading.com. And we'll see you guys in the next video.